Hi, my name's Christina and I am an, an, an addict and I've suffered homelessness um, and I'm going to be talking to you about my experiences while going through these things. I remember once when I was homeless and an addict, there was a girl that I knew who was an addict also and she was homeless and she needed an ambulance and this is in the middle, mid 90s and I remember the ambulance coming and they wouldn't touch her and she needed assistance to get on the stretcher to get in the ambulance and they wouldn't put their hands on her because she was an addict and, and um, I remember this that, that day and I was I was just so troubled that this is how I mean, we as human beings are being treated The reason why we're shifting our language from looking at complex needs to multiple disadvantage is because we're trying to take a more systems thinking lens and approach. When we think about complex needs that can feel really stigmatising labelling someone as complex and it recognises the problem as within the individual rather than within the system. And when we look at these kind of problems we need to be looking at the causes, how they're perpetuated and also how the system itself meets people's needs. When we first started looking at what the barriers to the NHS were for people experiencing homelessness, we looked a lot for stigmatisation, negative attitudes, judgmental attitudes towards people experiencing homelessness. And you can find examples of that. Hello, I'm Nicholas Dries. I'm a professor of social policy at the University of York. My name is Dr Mike Kelleher, um, I'm a consultant addiction psychiatrist and I'm clinical lead for addictions in the London Borough of Lambeth. My name is Michael Preston Shute. I'm an Emeritus Professor of Social Work at the University of Bedfordshire. to meet a, a client um, in, on this project who hasn't got a very traumatic backstory. We know that trauma often happening earlier in life can have a wide-ranging impact on our development. It's about finding out a little bit about what they need and also going at their pace. Mm. Um, people have often said that sometimes services will say people didn't turn up for appointments and they will label them as difficult to engage but often if we are a little bit more curious about people and understand what's going on in their life and the barriers that it takes for them to access services. The people that work at Groundswell like 80% are coming from that lived experience background I think just them knowing that alone you don't have to know details of somebody's experience you just have to you know that, that them wanting to help you, it's from a place of that they've been in that situation themselves where they've felt those barriers. So the NHS England long-term plan has explicit goals around improving health disparities and thinking about improving access to services for clients from all kinds of different backgrounds, not just homeless people, but people with multiple disadvantage, but something that everybody in adult social care and in the health service has an obligation to do. As we know, the people that we serve often have lots of complicated health conditions and as such they really need to get access to primary care because primary care is the front door to everything else. It is absolutely essential that you read primary legislation and you read the associated guidance so that you are knowledgeable about the powers and the duties that people who are relying on you will expect you to know about, 
and to deliver. We need to be kind. Um, our service users are used to be met with hostility. They say they have multiple traumas in their youth, but that's can often they can often be met with hostility in, in healthcare settings. So it's important just that we uh, we treat them with kindness, uh, bringing them in and try to meet them with where they're at. If they've got a bit more humanity, a bit more empathy, it's such a simple um, solution. I mean, we all want to be treated a certain way and it's only right that you should treat other people, no matter what background, what race, what sort of economic level they're at, treat them the same way that you would want to be treated yourself or you would want your loved one to be treated.